Um, so on to our, our next speaker is Dr. Jochen Spuck, who's a patent expert at the Swiss Federal Institute of Intellectual Property. Um, and he's going to be talking, uh, as I understand it, largely about patent landscaping. Yes. Thanks a lot. Great pleasure to, to be here. I won't keep you from your coffee more than 50 minutes, so just be patient. <laughs> Uh, one word about the uh, logo on top of it, uh, IP Search is our label, uh, and that's, it is a label, uh, under this label we are, we are servicing. Uh, we are not in nothing else but the Swiss Patent Office, but we have a patent service uh, all over the world. Our biggest markets are in Germany, but we work also in the UK and the US and other countries. And under this service we're doing a lot of different kinds of patent service, whatever you can think of. One uh, I present today is a patent, uh, patent landscape analysis and uh, quickly show you how we work on that. Um, we're working mostly on for big companies and mid-sized companies, but sometimes also for smaller ones. And I will show you later on how that also affects small companies, even if we don't work for them. Um, quite simple, uh, landscape in our, in our view is about competitive advantage. You want to have an information, uh, base of information to decide on what to do. Quite simply, um, you have a lot of strategies in mind, your business strategy, patent strategy, market strategy, everything needs to be um, under, uh, um, needs to have a certain data database that you can really uh, start um, deciding. What we do actually on patents, we la we're adding layer and layer of information onto patents. We not only have patents and patent aggregations, we have a very strong owner database, we have a regional uh, um, analysis, we can, for example, um, have more than 120 regions the world comparing, for example, London to Zurich on a certain technology. We have uh, um, the legal situation on uh, for all the, nearly all the available patents in the world right at hand, and we have also quite a few other um, expert angles, and one of them, for example, is patent quality. We heard before, patents are um, out there, are uh, many, but not all of them are really valuable. We believe that uh, with a lot of different uh, analysis, we believe that about 20% of all the patents around are really worth to look at. More than 70% are p potentially just patents. <laughs> and to compare all them to one or to each other, that's not, we don't want to have a value on the top of it, not a, ma a monetary value or so, but we want to compare patents if they are more or less interesting to look at. And for that, we, need, we use a rather simple approach but it, I think we, it's one of the better ones we, uh, we have so far found. We look first of all on citations. Uh, forward citations make, make sense in the, in the sense that if you publish a patent and very soon after a lot of other companies uh, cite your patent, there is something about that, what, about the content in your patent. It depends very much on the technology field. It depends on the time, as I said. So it's not always the same, for example, in, in some certain areas, there are a lot of citations very quickly, very many, and others there are not. So you have to weigh on technology in the technology field and also the time. Uh, time is the, the word about that. Um, a pattern which gets a citation very early, and very many very early, is, very, is much more worth than one pattern which gets maybe one citation in about 20 years. And those citations we are looking at are only those are from examiners, not from the patent, uh, from the patent owner itself. Um, and it's the patent offices all over the world. Um, there's another angle. What you can steer from as a patent owner is where you go for your patent, where you pay for it, or how much you pay for it actually finally. So a patent which is your company worth uh, a couple of thousand is also worth for the uh, other companies potentially in that in same area. So the legal situation uh, in this and the family size finally is also at least as important and as an angle as the other, the other two. And we merge them together to finally have a, an overview of all patents to can compare all of them to each other. And I show you how we use that for in, for one, in one particular case. Um, what we do is from there on we set up technology fields. That is what we usually do. We, have, we are patent experts, so we are technologists, so I'm, I'm a polymer chemist, for example. So we are, we are setting up patent technology fields. The first one, of, and I show you quite simply, is, is a very, very common technology field overview. That is uh, uh, something that has been done 2008 by Fraunhofer and is now used everywhere. But 35 technology fields, I'm, looked, I'm looking here at the UK um, activity in those areas. And you see quite well that UK, um, UK means 
the inventor's address, the patent on, on top of the patent, there's usually always an inventor and has an address. And if this address is based in the UK, then we count it for UK. It can be an, a US uh, big company having, I don't know, uh, 15 or so inventors, and one of them is, is a British one, but that's what we count. Uh, quite simply, you see already, computer technology, digital communication takes, takes the biggest share in the UK, and this is no, no secret. Also, the UK office recently published a study where that the same came out. Um, there are a couple of other uh, technologies like Measurement Pharma, which has at least a, a similar share, or at least a rather high share, let's say. Um, so you see a bit of, of the, 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 the typical spectra in the, done in the UK. Compared to, the, to Germany, um, oh, sorry, I forgot one. Computer technology, digital communication, that's the key. And I will speak about that, that image later, just a minute later. Um, compared to Germany, it looks like that. Oops. Does it come? Uh, no, does not come. Gets black. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there we go. This is the typical spectra for Germany, as you would expect. Transport, the car industry, mechanical elements, electrical machines, measurement, that's the big, the big stuff in, in Germany. You see also the share in the digital is not that high. And we also have recently done, that I um, have not the slide for it, but we have also done an, an interpretation study of how much digit or digital industry interpenetrates into other technologies. And we found, for example, for the bigger countries in Europe, that the UK has the biggest interpenetration into many other, into all, or the many other uh, technology areas. And we will go on to look on these details more because we think that is the key, actually. The key here for that, so for success of digital, is the penetration into others, to build new products, to cooperate, and to join things together to make new products and new, new applications out of it. The pure digital software-related stuff will probably never ever show really potentially up in the patent environment anyway, and products are, um, in our view, still something you can use finally or make, uh, make use of it finally. Um, here I have a small, I think it doesn't want to really, doesn't want me to go further very easily. So um, I'm sorry about that. I just have, uh, well, now it comes. To give you an idea about the size um, of patents compared to uh, from UK to Germany that you see, it is a bucket of factor three or two or four in, in sheer numbers. So far I haven't spoken about anything about quality. I've just had shown on numbers. Here is a, is a trend analysis. You see how digit or digital industry, how that improves extremely well, but you see also that all the others, or not very many of those others, are proving at the same speed. So you see, while that is well known, pharma and chemistry is going down in numbers currently, but there is not very many other fields which are improving so far. You, so you, to benefit from this um, digital approach, they have to now go further and implement it into the, all the others to, to help improving all the rest of the industries as well. But anyway, this is our very, very broad technology fields. Digital communication doesn't mean much. So we have now started to look at future technologies. We have about 50 or 60 or so patent aggregations to certain topics. Um, some, of, some of them are mentioned here. We found where, which are very strong improving technologies, not in pure numbers, but in, 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 in increase, are those. And uh, this is typical for UK. FinTech is, we have heard of that already. Uh, artificial intelligence, we had a person sitting here, and uh, digital medtech, this is all this image analysis stuff and so on. We have wearables, I met the person just in the beginning of the talk. And finally, we're going down from software, finally, to more industry-related stuff. We see also robotics coming up quite strongly. We see battery, the lithium battery technology in the UK coming up very strongly, very nice companies looking out there. And we have seen 3D printing as well. Unfortunately, while in Germany, autonomous driving is a bit of the, re the really uh, a key uh, of technology currently in the UK, we haven't found much. There's not really that much happening. So um, uh, Huawei is currently investing about 34 billion uh, euros into autonomous driving and lithium batteries. So in Germany, this is really strong. However, we found a lot of things in, in the UK already, and you see the numbers are not that uh, low especially if you look at the top patents. So now we're introducing, introducing the quality as well. We see 
uh, we look at the quality of patents, now on, we look at only the highest 10% of um, the, highest, uh, the highest rated patents. So this means really the 10% of the patents in the world which are really interesting. They have a lot of citations, they have the market, rather big market coverage, so they really inter are interesting. And you see the same tendency as well. A lot of increase recently, especially in those areas of artificial intelligence. Um, you see also wearables coming up. But what is also interesting is that you see also in the smaller ones, robotics and 3D printing, etc. you see a strong increase. There's something happening currently in the UK. And it is, this, these patents are only few, let's say. We are only talking about 100 or 200 or 300 or 400, but this is really interesting stuff. And we take a closer look now on the situation in 3D printing. Quite quickly, this is for example, next slide is a market overview in 3D printing and currently it's not what, it's going on and going. This is now pre 3D printing technology and I'm only talking about selective technology. Patents having a specifically claiming or describing uh, SLS, SLA or including DL DLP for example, FDM or powder bind, etc. Doesn't matter. What is interesting here is this is a market overview we can, we can quickly produce. You see very well that the big ones, 3D systems and Tatasys are dominating, that's the US brands. Uh, EOS from Germany, we, hear, we will hear about that, uh, I think, later today. And we see a lot of companies sitting here in that area, and one of them, for example, Rainy Show is a UK-based company with about two, more than 2,000 employees currently. What is also interesting, and that's why I wanted that, that sheet, is you have GE and BASF coming into it. And that's currently a state of, of a situation in that area where not 3D system and Strata, this is buying every company out there, now the big ones are entering. GE from the application side, BASF from the polymer and photo initiator side, and they're starting to go into that market. So it's now currently, not, not now, but since a while already happening a few things in that area. We look at a bit closer if we focus on SLS, which is, um, D technology, I believe, or we believe, and a couple of others. Hopefully, it comes. <laughs> um, the most the industry focused in technologies is really metal and powder printing, uh, loose powder materials. And there, for example, EOS is the biggest, probably the, the leader in the field. Um, all the others are staying there. This is the competition around uh, SLS, we believe. And GE is still there. And it is there because, quite simply, they just not only they build up <laughs> their technology themselves, they have a board concept later, they've bought Occam, and they try to buy SLM, and they didn't succeed with a bit of 1.4 billion. <laughs> For a patent company which has a portfolio of about 25 patents. <laughs> you see how valuable patents can be? <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know wha how that will proceed, but the question is, how do you survive in such an area? That is a bit of the key question, I think. And since our mission is to um, promote innovation, that's our mission, we think it is mostly you can survive only there through innovation and at least at a part to collaboration or at least to, buy, to take over. Um, and the question is, where does that innovation come from? Um, is it just something coming out of that companies? If you worked in a company, you usually know that after a while um, your focus getting closer and closer and finally you're producing what you have and your innovation level gets not always up sometimes it's just uh, rather focused let's say you need some inputs from the, from the outside and therefore we we analyzed a bit of the situation of university activity and small company activity small in the sense low, less than 20 uh, active patents um, so typically companies having about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven patents or so. We looked at the in a comparison also from Germany to the UK and also Switzerland and you see already Switzerland is nearly, nearly uh, not existing in that area. Unfortunately, <laughs> we really do not find much activity in Switzerland so far. We have found a lot of activity in Germany and also something in the UK. So far that, that share 60 to 160, 30 to 90 is still 1 to 3. That's okay, fine. Then we checked a bit more closely and we see, for example, in, the in Germany, they are strong institutions. They're working really heavily with, with more than 50 patents. Fraunhofer is, is active in that area. So Germany has a background of, of 3D printing technology in the university environment, which, for example, in the UK is 
I um, have, sorry to say, but not that, that, not that strong. That list is not exhaustive. There are a lot of other uh, universities doing things like Manchester Metropolitan with their artificial eyes and so on. I try to focus a bit on those who have at least a process or technology related uh, patents in that area. But none of them have more than two or three or one as four. Okay, that's fine. But there could be much more, I suppose. <laughs> and for the small companies, it's similar a bit, let's say. We have a bit of some found something in Germany. There's, um, for example, you can also print already nanobots, etc., stuff like that. But we found also things in, in the UK. And then we look closer into that. What are those companies? It's only 60, so I can really look them up. Um, and I found a couple of companies. We have no relations to them or no, not, nothing at all. It's just what you can see. That is the visibility in the patent environment. So if you want to be visible, if you want to have uh, your own yourself view seen, then it would or can also be a reason to patent. Those companies are quite interesting. Yeah, we have just looked at one of a couple of them doing very, very interesting stuff. For example, uh, the next one, Hybrid, has also a collaboration with Renishaw. You see already there is uh, collaborations are working together in those area. Um, for example, Domain Fluid. I really don't know the companies. I just found them and. Um, that's what, I, what can be seen. One of them, for example, View Holographic is so new they don't have even a, a website, web page yet. But they have already a patent which has a, a quality a value which is remarkable. So this is what big companies also do. They screen the market and look for the smaller ones to see if something can be extracted out of that market. And um, we are rather... Uh, convinced that even if you um, are a small company, you should look at the landscape. You should at least try to find out what the situation out there is, what the big players are, and where they are actually are, what they really, what they focus on, and make yourself either visible or not, but you still have to be aware of what you're doing. And to do nothing as I think is uh, the worst thing you can do in a tech environment. To do the right is the best. And uh, with, it, with information, you can at least go one step further to the right than to the nothing. <laughs> and that's what we suppose, uh, what we think is, is important in that area. And we try to have a, a method available which can do quick analysis very on, on different angles, on technologies, regions, and whatsoever. So you need a med tech company in Frankfurt, I can tell you. <laughs> that's our message, and that's what we do. Um, be supporting that as a service for everybody and if you want to know a bit more then I can show you uh, on our booth. So that's for us. Technology field as a reference, that's our goal. We are the experts. We're setting technology areas together. We're selecting patents to a certain technology and then we're adding layers on top of it to finally go to a really uh, a simple, let's say, a sim simple accessible visual information on t uh, uh, to that question you have. You can also have, a, finally, also a table of all the patents, but if you want to read 2,000 patents, you still can do. <laughs> but uh, sometimes a, a picture tells more than a table. So that's about us, um, and here we are.